and, 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 and getting all rowdy with them and when they can just hit that walkie talkie and have 100 people on you is not a smart idea. Okay, so I don't recommend that. You don't even have to do it because they're doing their job. At the end of the day, they're doing the job and they think they're doing they think they're doing their job right. A lot of them really do because they're trained messed up. So a lot of them really think they're doing the right thing by violating your rights because that's how they were trained. It's lit -ed. Oh yeah, we lit, lit box. When I'm turned up, it go down. You know how I get, you know how I get. You know I'm legit, you know I'm legit. You know I be lit, you know I be lit. And I'm on a mission to hit every city. When you see me get with me, it's lit. -ed. Litbox TV is lit. Uh, welcome to Litbox TV. I'm Lord Akim. Today, I want to talk to y'all about the criminal justice system. Okay. Fortunately and unfortunately, I've been arrested numerous times, but um, I've learned a lot. Okay. Um, during that, during those arrests. So, I want to share a lot of stuff I learned with y'all. Um, I want to start by saying this is not legal advice. I'm not an attorney. If you need a legal, if you need some legal advice, go find you an attorney. I'm not an attorney. This is for entertainment and educational purposes only. I'm not trying to tell y'all what to do. I'm just going to tell y'all what I did and explain to y'all why I did it and why it worked. At the end of this video, you're going to know how to deal with the police, the district attorney, that legal aid and the judge. Because the police, the district attorney, your legal aid and the judge, they all took an oath, okay? They all took the same oath to the same corporation called the courts. So they're number one, and they took an oath to, to do what's best for the court first. Remember that, that legal aid took an oath to do what's best for the court first. The district attorney took an oath to do what's best for the court first. Judge took an oath to do what's best for the courts first. Okay, so always remember that. So let's start with the police. But before we talk about the police, let's establish the difference between committing a crime and breaking the law. Okay, so because most people when I say that, they be like, what? It's the same thing. If you if you broke the law, you committed a crime. If you committed a crime, you broke the law. And that's just not true. Okay? So a crime, in order for something to be a crime, and I don't care what anyone say, okay? They're gonna try to tell you different because it's their job to tell you different, but I don't care what anyone says. There's no such thing as a crime if there's no victim. If there's, if there's no victim, then there's no crime, period. Bottom line. Now, if, if, if you, um, if there's a victim, then you committed a crime. If you uh, hurt somebody, you took their property or damaged their property or prevented them from doing something or going somewhere like, you know, kidnap or forcing yourself on someone or doing something to someone or their property is a crime, okay? Everything else, everything else is breaking the law. If it doesn't involve a victim, then you just broke someone's laws. Okay, now, laws are meant to be broken. And when you understand that the court is just a corporation, then you'll realize how a lot of these laws don't apply to you. See what they do, this is what they do. What they do is they take these infractions of the law, okay, and then they turn them into crimes and then drag you into criminal court and treat you like a criminal. That's illegal. They're not supposed to do that. Okay, if there's no victim, there's no crime. If there's no crime, then I shouldn't be in criminal court. So, but if you let them drag you in criminal court for loitering, open beer container, smoking a blunt, uh, trespassing, then that's on you. I'm not gonna allow them to, to just drag me into court and accept it, into criminal court. And so how I would handle that, let me, let me give you an example, okay. I'm walking down the block, the D's jump out, racially profiling like they do. So I know it's a lot of people who be like, why would they just jump out and for no reason? You live where I grew up, okay? And you'll know, this, this is just what they do. They're trained to do that and that's just what they do. Those are the facts. Just because they don't do it in your neighborhood, 
doesn't mean it's not happening in our neighborhoods. So they do that. So the police jump out on you for no goddamn reason, just because you're black and walking down the block, and they got a quota and they got stuff. You know, they they under a lot of pressure to to, to make it money for the city. Okay, so they out there, they see you, they jump out on you, they search you, they find a bag of weed, they lock you up, you go to court, they offer you a fine, you pay it. I'm not paying. And I'm not even talking about the weed. See, what they do, see, one thing with me, I don't deal with byproducts of my rights being violated before I deal with the fact that my rights was violated. So the police jumped out on me. What the hell, what the hell did he jump out on me for in the first place? Okay, we got to establish that first. See, but what happens is they'll drag you in the court and they'll just start talking about that bag of weed and you know you had a bag of weed on you and if you got caught for it before, you had a prior criminal record, they throw that up in your face, they start scaring you and now they just got the weed. When the fact of the matter is, why did the police jump out on me on the first place? Could he see the bag of weed in my pocket? Like, no, he couldn't. So what made him jump out on me? Let's get to that. They, now, the police are always going to say you were looking suspicious, you were moving suspicious. Okay, um, but it, was there a, a report of any crimes uh, taking place at that particular time? Like, a lot of stuff matters. So how I would handle that case is saying, before we can even get to this weed, we got to first establish what made the police jump out on, out on me and did he even have the rights to do that? Okay, see, that's going to slow them up. Remember when I said slow up the line? Now we slowing up the line. Because before we start even talking about this marijuana, we got to establish if the police officer had rights to stop me in the first place. Okay, and I'm going to fight for that. I'm going to push that. I'm pushing that issue. And then I'm telling them, in the same breath, I'm not copping out. I'm not interested in the fine. I'm not interested in the plea bargain. I'm, I want to go to trial and I'm ready now. That's how I talk to them. I'm ready to go to trial and I want to go now. If y'all ready today, I'm ready today. And then they say, oh, it takes time. We got it. Well, well, he's saying this. I'm saying that. Let's, 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 let's get the jury. They don't want that because they just want a little fine out of me. So they don't really want to put together a whole jury and go through all of this for a little marijuana charge. But see, if I go in there and I just cop out, then the police is going to continue to do it. And then next week is going to happen to somebody else, or if not me again. Okay? So I got to fight. If I don't fight, then it's just going to keep happening. And that's what's happening. We, we, they lock us up, they violate your rights, and you go in there and you pay the fine. Why would you do that? They violated your rights. They violated you. So why would you pay them? It's just going to keep happening. And two, we go in there and say, no, you know what? I want to go to trial because guess what's going to happen? They're not going to take it to trial. They're going to dismiss it. And guess what's going to happen once they dismiss it? You're going to sue them. And you're going to get some money. So guess what happens when that cop come around and get messing with you? It don't look good for him. Now it looks like harassment. Now it looks like another lawsuit. So they leave you alone. And if more people started to do that, then the system will slow up and they'll stop just jumping out on you looking like, look, it's like, it's like y'all easy money. Lord, I came is not easy money. There's nothing easy about me in court. Nothing. You know, I had a situation where when I first really started uh, traveling in the music industry, I had caught a case. And um, I think it was for like some marijuana or something like that. And 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 uh, I wanted, I was going to cop out because I was actually tired of going to court because I was supposed to be in LA the, the week I went to court and I was mad because I couldn't go to LA and, and do some music stuff so I was like man I'm gonna just go to court and cop out to this shit man because I'm I'm just I'm so tired of this man and this like whatever I, at, at that point I was like you know what I'll pay this whatever 200 and something dollar fine just because I'm losing more money at this point going into court so I went into court and you know when you when you uh plea bargain they they ask you oh they, they describe the, the crime and then say, well, do, do you admit to doing it? So you have to admit to, 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 to doing a crime in order to plead. So when the judge asked me, uh, on such and such day and blah, 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 did you possess marijuana, blah, 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 and, wish, and, and would like to plead guilty? I said, no, I didn't have no marijuana. He said, so then why are you pleading guilty? I said, because I'm tired of coming to court. I'm tired. Like, y'all wasting my time. Like. I got things to do. 
So I'd rather just pay this fine and get it over with, even though, no, I didn't have no marijuana on. He said, unfortunately, I, I, I can't accept that plea. I said, why not? He said, because I, I, I can't accept it, because you're not admitting to the guilt. So I can't accept that plea. So he adjourned it. And in the next court date, he dismissed it. You understand what I'm saying? It's a game. Like, everybody know, like, I'm 6'2", I, you put me on a basketball court, on your team, we might lose. <laughs> we might lose. But put me in a criminal court, you stand a good chance of winning. Because I, I, I play, I play criminal court very well. You understand? Because I read, I study, it's a language that you got to understand. So now, just say even like a, a loitering, a loitering. Say the cops jump out on you, you in front of the store, the cops jump out on you, tell you you can't stand here, it says no loitering. They have no right to do that. Because unless the person who owns that property, who put that sign up there, called them and said, there's people loitering on my property and I want them removed, then they have no right to do that. That's not their property. They can't enforce that sign. But see, you think that, or you say, oh damn, it did say no loitering. Damn, he did arrest it. And somebody said, yo, it said no loitering, what you was over there loitering for? But that's not the police officer's sign to enforce. That's the property owner's sign to enforce. So he has to call the police. He or she has to call the police and tell, and ask for them to remove you. But in our case, they never do that. We in front of the grocery store, we in front of the liquor store, you be in front of chicken spot, you could be on a corner in front of your building. And they'll be like, hey, you can't stand here. Well, why not? Because you don't want me to stand here? I can stand here. So, but the thing is, I tell people this all the time. I don't really get into it with police, and I don't recommend that. They're the biggest gang in America, okay? It's not the Bloods, not the Crips, not MS-13. It's the police, okay? And I always tell people that. They're the biggest gang in America. So you if, if, if you, you got to fight them a certain way. And, 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 and getting all rowdy with them and when they can just hit that walkie-talkie and have 100 people on you is not a smart idea. Okay, so I don't recommend that. You don't even have to do it because they're doing their job. At the end of the day, they're doing a job and they think they're doing they think they're doing their job right. A lot of them really do because they're trained messed up. So a lot of them really think they're doing the right thing by violating your rights because that's how they were trained. They weren't educated. They were trained. It's a big difference. Training is packed with lies. Education is filled with the truth. So they weren't educated about us. And, and they were trained on how to deal with us. So that's why they deal with us the way they deal with us. So, okay, now, so the, the, the police lock you up for loitering. All you got to do if you know the person in the store is get a letter from him or a notarized letter from him stating that that's his store and he gave you, you had permission to be in front of it. Case dismissed and it's over with. There's nothing they can do. You tell them you won't go to trial. They want to keep dragging it out, you drag it out. But when that case is over, you sue. Every time you get a case dismissed, you sue. You have to sue. You have to. And the more we do that, the more they're going to stop playing. So now, let's get to, you know, what happens is the police arrest you. And what's supposed to really happen is the police charge you with a crime. And then, uh, and, and then they, they accuse you of a crime and then it goes to the district attorney and they put together the criminal complaint and all of that stuff, right? But what happens is the police, they'll arrest you and then they'll call the district attorney and ask the district attorney what to charge you with. Like, that's, that's, they're not supposed to do that. The police officer, if you re arrested me, then you're supposed to know what you arrested me for. And you're supposed to know the charges that come with that. So you're not supposed to call the district attorney and ask the district attorney what to charge me with. But they do that. Because that's the type of game they play with our lives. Okay? And then the district attorney, it, it'll say, oh, it's, it's two things? Here, put five things on there. We're going we're gonna to put five charges so we can scare them into copping out to one. And this is the game they play. And then they act like they're doing you a favor by dismissing three charges that should have never been there in the first place. And people fall for that. You understand what I'm saying? So, the, the, in the legal aid, let's, 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 let's talk about the legal aid now. The legal aid, his sole purpose is to get you not to, to, to state the truth. Okay? So, he's there for, for a lot of reasons, but one of his main reasons is so the truth never come out and so you don't speak and so 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 the facts never come out. They act like they're interested in the facts, but they're really not. They're interested in making money and manipulating the situation to the best they can. 
Okay, that's why sometimes, if even when they, they like the evidence, they still try to convey. Or they still don't dismiss. Because they just try to, try to squeeze us for everything. You have the right to protect yourself. That is your universal right. That is your God-given right. Those are rights that you're born with. That's not something, see, and another thing, freedom. Freedom is not something someone gives you. Freedom can only be taken from you. No one can give you freedom. You're born free. You're born free. They can only take it. And when you allow them to do, come in your neighborhood, jump out on you, treat you any type of way, you go in there, you buckle up under the pressure, then what you expect? We have to stop folding under the pressure. We have to understand who we dealing with and how to deal with them. And that's what this video is gonna help y'all understand, how to deal with the court system. Okay, so now, the first thing you need to do, once you meet that legal aid, first you gotta study. Because none of this is going to work. If, 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 if you only study up to a certain point, you're going to get to a point where you say something, they're going to say something, you're going to be stuck. And you're not going to know what to do. So you're going to have to do a lot of studying. And then it just goes to the point where you're just going to have to lace up your boots and, and, and go for it. And you, you, have to, you have to fire that legal way. You have to fire the legal way. If you got... Anytime you arrested for breaking the law, the first thing you need you need to do is fire that attorney. Fire that legal way. Because he's gonna drag it out. He's gonna he's just gonna mess up the whole situation. And I'm telling you, if it's something like a like a like an open bed container, like nah, you gotta show me the victim. You gotta show me the 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 the, the, the sign criminal complaint from the victim must be a criminal complaint. Someone must have complained about something I did for you to come grab me and bring me into a criminal court. Okay? This is, we're not in lawbreakers court, we're in criminal court. You treat so therefore you're treating me like a criminal. Therefore I must have committed a crime. Therefore there must be a victim. So where's the victim? Because it's my right to confront my accuser. That's due process of the law. I have my right. If you accuse me of something, I have the right to confront you in court. So who is accusing me of something? If I'm loitering, who accused me of loitering? Because the police officer reported the loitering. So who, I mean, re responded to the call of loitering, okay? So who reported their property being loitered on? You gotta show me that. I need to see that phone call. I need to hear that phone call. Because y'all keep a record of everything. Who told you I was trespassing on their property that made you come and say, hey, you can't stand here, move. I need to hear that phone call. It's letting. Oh, yeah, we lit. Lit box. When I'm turned up, it go down. You know how I get, you know how I get. You know I'm legit, you know I'm legit. You know I be lit, you know I be lit. And I'm on a mission to hit every city. When you see me, get with me, it's letting. Lit box TV. It's lit.